Hello and welcome back to part 9 of Rust for Beginner series. This video is about smart pointers, how to create them or how to use them. We will start by taking a look at box. Then we'll use box to create link list. After that we will create our custom pointer which will act similar to box. And finally we will dive into the drop trait. So box is the most basic smart pointer. But what exactly happens when we create a pointer? Okay, suppose we want to store a variable which is of type integer. This gets stored into stack. When we store this integer value using a smart pointer, in this case box, the value is stored within the heap and the reference to this value is stored within the stack. To create a box, we just need to do box new and then pass the value that we want to be stored in the heap. And printing it is pretty straightforward. Since box is a generic type, we can store any kind of data within it. We can store a slice, a string or any other custom structure. Ok now we know a little bit about box, so now it's time to build a linked list. To create a linked list we will be using box to store the next node. But to create a node we will be using a structure called cons list. To create a linked list we can create a enum. And this type of enum can have two values, first is cons and the other one is nil. Within cons, we'll first have the data type of the data that we want to store and next we'll store the address to the next node. Cons will behave as a node and once we have reached the final node, we can use nil. Now if I just leave it to linked list, we'll get an error. As when the compiler tries to determine the size of linked list enum, it goes within cons where it finds another linked list which creates a circular loop. So here we'll use a box. Because box is a smart pointer and the memory it uses is fixed and therefore there is no circular dependency for the compiler. Next we'll import both cons and nil so that we don't need to resolve it each time we want to use it. Now let's create an actual linked list using this enum. So our variable x will be equal to a cons and suppose the data we want is 454. Then we'll create a new node. This node will be wrapped within a box. Similarly, we'll create as many nodes as we want. And to end this linked list, we'll pass nil for the next node in our final node. Now we can't print the entire linked list with single print line statement, at least not without debug. But I would like to traverse it and then print the values as it will give you an example of how to traverse a linked list. So first up we'll create a mutable variable i and it will store the reference to x which is a starting node. Then we'll create a loop inside which we'll have a math statement and we'll match the two possible conditions of i. Either we have a node for that we have cons. Within cons we have two parameters first is the value and then the next node. If i is not a cons then it will be a nil. And when we encounter a nil node we will break out of this loop. Finally, we just print the value within the cons block and then update the value of i to the next node. Now box is good when there is a single ownership. But what if we have a situation where multiple nodes can have ownership of some other node. So in this example, you can see we have a, b and c. A is our base linked list, then we have B and C which connects to A. Now this is not achievable using box, but we have another smart pointer called RC or reference counting, which can be useful here. First let's try to create the linked list that I showed with just box. Now it works fine for A but not for B as the value has been moved to A. Ok so next we'll try to use RC in place of box. So we need to replace box with RC and rest remains mostly the same. 
So we'll wrap the link list for X within the RC new. And then replace all the boxes within the link list with RC. For A and B we'll do slightly different. Instead of calling the new function of RC we'll do a clone and take the reference of X. Okay, so next we also need to update the traversing logic. So currently we are getting a reference to RC link list. But if we use the star operator, which in this case is not the multiplication operator, but rather the deref operator, then we'll just get the link list as the type for I. We will add an ampersand to star X so that we only get the reference to the link list, not the ownership. Similarly, within cons, we'll do ampersand star star next ampersand to get the reference to link list and then star star to deref twice. Traversing A or B is not same as traversing X as X is of type RC linked list whereas A and B are of type linked list because of cons list. So if we want to traverse A then we need to remove the deref operator. Currently, the integer data stored within the link list is not mutable. If you want to create a link list whose data we can update, then we can use refcel. Now, refcel uses the unsafe block when updating values, so it can cause memory bugs. Be careful when using it. Next, we'll wrap the integer values of the nodes within RC and refcel. And finally, we'll update the values within the cons block of math statement. First, we'll print the old values. Now to do that, first we'll deref the var parameter and then we'll borrow that value. Updating the value is also pretty similar. We'll first deref the val parameter, then borrow a mutable and then we can add or update the value however we want. In this case, I'm deducting 10 from each value. And finally, let's print the updated value. Now let's see how to create a custom smart pointer. Okay, so let's create a custom smart pointer called newbox. For that we'll need to create a generic tuple struct called newbox. Then we'll create an implementation for this new box and create a new function within it. This new function creates an instance of new box and returns that. This is a very rudimentary smart pointer. Let's store a new box within a variable and try to print it. To print we need to deref it manually as we don't have any deref trait right now. Currently, I just created a new box instance without the new function. But since we have created a new function, so let's use that rather than just creating it without the function. Let's also create a box to compare the two smart pointers. When we print the box variable, it automatically deref's. 
we can add the deref operator before y to manually deref but in this case rust automatically does that for us so just like box we can store any kind of data and i would like to use a string slice to show you more about derefing in rust let's also create a custom function that prints these values Okay, so now you can see we have called the print function twice and we are getting error for both of them. Now it's easy to fix the issue with the box variable as we can manually deref that using the deref operator but the same cannot be done with x right now. So let's make that happen by creating an implementation block for the deref trait. So we'll simply do implement deref. Keep in mind to add the crate deref for new box and then we'll implement the deref first up is the type target ours is a generic type so i'll make it equal to t and within deref we'll do ampersand self dot zero now our custom pointer also has deref which means the print function is able to deref the value when we provide the deref operator Now another thing that I want to show is that if I convert this string slices to string then instead of using the deref operator I can simply use the ampersand that is passing it as reference within the print fn and it will work as rust automatically derefs the value. Now behind the scenes the actual code is something like reference of x dot deref. Or maybe reference of deref operator x but this is automatically handled by rust i highly recommend reading two topics on the official documentation first one implicit deref cohesions and the second one how deref cohesion interacts with mutability Okay, so next up we have the prop trait. Its implementation contains a function which gets called when the value is dropped. Now it doesn't matter whether the value was dropped because the variable went out of scope or it was manually dropped by the drop function. Implementing this drop trait is pretty straightforward. We create an implementation block, add the necessary inputs and then simply do whatever we want to do within this drop function. In my case, I'll just print the value stored within the new box. So currently we are getting an error because there is no guarantee that T implements the display trait. So we'll ensure that by adding the where block within the declaration of the new box struct. Now T must be a type that does implements the display trait. As I said, we can also drop the values manually. We can simply call the drop function and pass the variable whose value we want to be dropped. Now, obviously, after the drop statement, we can't print that value because it's already been dropped. So now if I run this, I'm getting a log for both the values when they're being dropped. So that was all for this video. I hope you learned something. Please give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Do consider subscribing and I will see you in the next one.